Well, they'll be like what a couple seconds away. So for just an announcement for members of the public that are watching the live stream of this meeting, there was an executive session held prior to the voting meeting. And there are, are three items being added to the agenda. We're getting feedback. I think it's playing the YouTube while it's recording the YouTube. Is there any way to turn the volume off of the so that it can't play the, the live stream? Okay. Where's where's the YouTube right here? See that? Yeah. Is there any way to turn that off here? We have to. It's four, Kevin. Is that? Yeah, hold on. Yeah, but if you turn it off, we don't have the live stream. Oh, wait, you have the kid here. Let me start with them. Yeah, but then we're not going to hear Mr. Perry and Mr. Carroll. So, is there any way to maximize the YouTube right now? So, what can be done here to turn? Oh, right there, right there. Good. So turn it off or you know, mute that. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Sorry about that. We're, we're ready now. So we're adding four items to the voting agenda. Um, these are items that were discussed in the executive session. And they'll be under personnel. 8.2.9 will be a raise increase for our board secretary slash confidential administrative assistant. An increase of one dollar thirty cent for the hourly rate for our board secretary, confidential administrative assistant, retroactive to July first. 
plus a one-time $250 stipend. The next item will be 8.2.10. That is a salary increase for our Act 93 employees. It will be an increase of 2.5% for the annual salary of the Act 93 employees retroactive to July 1st, 2020. The, the other item is that we are 8.2.10. 11 is a rate increase for the daily rate of substitute employees. Um, the, rate, the rate of $125 per day for substitute teachers was being recommended to approve, as well as a daily rate of $100 for substitute classified employees. Finally, 8.2.12 will be the yeah. Approve necessary hires. Approve necessary hires to be, ratified at the next to be ratified at the next meeting, which will be in October. Those are the four voting items being added to the agenda. If any member of the public wants to make comment on those items or any other items that are being voted on this evening, you have until. You have until 7.28 p.m. this evening to call area code 412-469-3200. You want to dial extension 2560. That's 412-469-3200, extension 2560. That is the number you are to call if you want to make public comment for this evening's voting meeting here at Still Center. And you need to do that by 7.28 p.m. The meeting will start right at 7.28 p.m. At that time, if we don't have any public comment, we will just commence our business. Thank you. So it's going to get started at 7 28 p.m. We have to allow a little bit of time for public comment on the item we had um, out of the executive session. So the last three of those items, we're giving the public a few minutes to call in to our phone here with the public comment. We'll get started at 7 28. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Please rise for flight doors. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yes. Motion carried to state. Executive Director's report. Yes. 
Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm recommending under the executive director's report action items, the board approved items 8.1 through 8.2.8. Or 12, yeah. I'm sorry. I think we should, I think the, since they're added, we should do those individually. But I'll make a motion to 8.1.1 to 8.2.8. I'll second that. Are there any questions or comments? Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Leon? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Mr. Kaspar? Yes. Mrs. Harris? Yes. Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Uh, Magaris? Yes. Mr. Mr. Alexandra? Yes. And Mrs. Wolf? Yes. Motion carries the state. I'll recommend that the board approve item 8.2.9. So moved. Second. And that would be the second. The second. Lynn Cohen. Can you read that motion? Um, sorry. I haven't had my paper. That's the second. Okay. <laughs> That's the, it's the rate increase for yeah. the board secretary. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Would you like me to read that one since it's been asked? Okay. Um, this um, is asking the, for the committee to approve a rate increase of $1.30 for the hourly rate for the board secretary confidential administrative assistant retroactive to July 1st, 2020, and also a one time stipend in the amount of $250. Um, Second. Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Mr. Cashwire? Yes. Mrs. Harris? Yes. Mr. Perry? Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Garris? Yes. Mr. Downer? Yes. Mr. Alexandra? Yes. Mr. Rule? Yes. Motion carries the statement. May I just take a moment and thank everybody? I really appreciate that. I enjoy being on the board. I appreciate it. Thank you. 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 Um, that motion is um, proposing an increase of 2.75% for the annual salary of the Act 93 employees retroactive to July 1st, 2020. Second. Questions or comments? Mr. Yes. Yes. Ashwa? Yes. Harris? Yes. Mr. Perry? Barry? Yes. Yes. Ms. Ligeros? Yes. Mrs. Dowler? Yes. Mr. Alexandrov? Yes. And Mrs. Roll? Yes. Motion carries the state. It would be recommend approval of 8.2.11. That motion is recommending the, the substitute employee rate for the 2021 school year. Um, the increase for teachers to the rate of 125 per day and for classified employees, which includes secretaries, aides, and custodians, up to $100 per day. Questions or comments? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Harris? Mr. Perry? Mr. Perry? Yes. Ms. Lagares? Yes. Mrs. 
Ballard, yeah. Mr. Uh, Alexandra, yeah. and Mrs. Bull. Yes. Motion carried. Stated. Yeah. There's one more. Eight point two point five. Yeah. Sorry. Wait a minute. Eight point two point twelve. I'm sorry. That would be for treasury notes. Um, it's being recommended that the board approve the necessary hires for Steel Center to be ratified at the next meeting, which will be in October. Remove. Okay. Have questions or comments? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Uh, Ms. Ligaris? Yes. Valor, yes. Mr. Alexandra, yes. And Mrs. Roll. Yes. Motion carried to state it. Thank you. Let's do that. <laughs> Is there a building in ground report tonight? No report. Yep. Yeah. And thank you. Architect. Superintendent and record. Dr. Uh, Dr. Thank you. <laughs> All's well, right? All is well. Good. Nothing beyond what we discussed in executive session. Thank you all. Information item. Yeah, last year, folks from, from us again. My apologies for not having our, our, our GOC brief in the format that we're used to um, for obvious reasons. Um, however, I did want to include the, the types of information and supplements that you would have received in that document. Most importantly, is just the current uh, capturing our current enrollment. Um, as of right now, you know, as of yesterday, rather the 31st, um, we have we're holding here with 772 students, um, and you can see the the first two pages of this uh, packet include a breakdown by school district and then also by program, uh, morning versus afternoon. And we do expect that to change to what degree is is really we've never been in a situation like this, so uh, there's no way of projecting, uh, but we're going to continue to monitor it and work. As closely as we can with our member school district, uh, high school administrations and guidance offices as we're adjusting kids' schedules and so on. Um, also, the third page of that is a report that we generate. That, that, you know, the most important enrollment that I would draw your attention to without having a decoder ring for all of the data points are those columns, those cells that are in red. Those are all programs that are full or at capacity. So the column that mark AM would be uh, all the way down through if you follow along. There's currently one space in advertising and design in the morning, one space in cosmetology, uh, five spaces in culinary arts, three space, two spaces in uh, heating and air conditioning, I'm sorry, public safety. So that's all the, you know, the openings we have currently in the morning. And in the afternoon, uh, we're a little later in the afternoon. And that's been the case for a couple of years. Although the districts, as we have them uh, organized, based on who's sending morning and afternoon, the potential student population is about the same. The districts that are uh, or scheduled for the morning session obviously send at a higher rate than those who are scheduled for the afternoon. But the pool of students eligible is, is, is a pretty even split. Uh, but that's just something I want to draw your attention to, that we're still sitting here with programs that are at capacity, both morning and afternoon. And that would be the cells that are uh, highlighted in red. Um, the other, the next page, and I think I sent this out there last week. We what, what did we finish last year with? In June? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I don't have that. Or, 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 oh, I think we're at like 730, 725. Oh, like, we no. started out at like 760 in October 15th. And by by the end of the year, I think we're right around seven and a quarter. That's not a stable number, but seven and a quarter. Seven and a quarter, yeah. 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 Kids transferred in and out. And, and, and leading into the summer the scheduling process, we were concerned that numbers were going to be wrong or slow at that time. So they were because the application process was interrupted when COVID you know, happened. And so we were coming and we were back on track. Yeah, I mean, this time last year, there were probably, I think we started day one last year, we had 838 on the roster. And we, we landed at like 760. So I 
it's hard. You would never, I have no idea what's going to happen. I mean, I, I worry about the October 15th numbers when we live by here. Um, but, but the number we hold is relatively high considering all the circumstances and the way that schedule got interrupted in the spring. And then the fact we have, we didn't open up those new programs. I mean, we haven't been able to open up under the normal conditions and have those new programs up and around. You know, I would expect this number to be a lot higher. Yeah, I, I think it's up to us to keep promoting because I thought the second clarity thought that we were not even back in school here. So I think it's up to us to spread the word that yes, we're alive and well, and you know, we are more happy. All, all the kids, all those numbers of 772 kids that are rostered, they receive regular Blackboard Connect phone updates from us as we've given out and, and pushed out information on our website. Um, you know, they all receive packets of information, mail packets, uh, we call them welcome back packets. They were certainly delayed from when we normally send them out because we were waiting for a number of, of you know, uh, information to develop, but uh, they, they received those, I think, well over a week before the first day of school. And then, you know, we produced a, um, for the new students, a new student orientation process that was pushed out last Tuesday night. It's still on the website for people to view. So we do have some students, for example, West Midland students aren't starting right in person, but those students have access to new student orientation prior to their, their hard return, which will be in October. Um, it's going to take probably by the end of the second week for us to really get an appreciation of who's here, when they're here, which days they're here. And that, that leads me to the next page in the packet, which is a, a spread of, of our student scheduling based on in school districts. <clears throat> this is incredibly challenging for our teachers and our staff here. And the way that we decided to approach our reopening plan, our health and safety plan and our reopening strategies was to be as accommodating as possible to our member school districts for whom we serve. But in doing that, we created certain challenges here, um, obviously because the, the group of students. So we're approaching instruction using the Canvas platform on a five day perspective. Whether kids in person here, two days and at home, three days, whether they're in person on Tuesday and Thursday, where other students may be in person on Thursday and Friday, you know, the, the instructional delivery is set up on campus to be a five day delivery. And of course, on Wednesdays, we're not here for deep cleaning and for remote learning only. But, but that's really, you know, tells the story about the challenges that, that we're facing is to educate those 772 students or whatever number it turns out to be. With the, uh, the landscape of that many uh, variations to our schedule. So, and just for information purposes, I put in there, included in this packet, kind of what we did with our teachers. We added, we changed the school calendar um, and added some Act, on, Act 80 days. Um, and by doing that, we um, you know, increased the amount of time our teachers could prepare with Canvas implementation. So you, know, you have on there a schedule of the in service activities we did. And then finally, and I think I mentioned this at our August meeting. And uh, so, so then I say this is because Dr. Shears here, although I appreciate him being here, but it, you know, the team at the IU has done a great job. Really, in, in a lot of ways, of picking up for smaller systems like us, I'm sure maybe Clarence in the smaller districts. Uh, Aaron Skirbin from uh, the, the Director of Health and Safety for the IU uh, works closely with county emergency and health officials. Um, the task forces that have put together and, and the ones that have produced these documents, specifically the decision tree, this has been very helpful. You know, they were very generous in you know, turning over all the school districts or CPCs to make modifications to kind of localize it and create their own positions. And, and the, the, uh, the content and the, the uh, structure of what we're doing, how we're doing contact tracing, how we're monitoring students once they're ill, once they have symptoms. All of those things are, and I think Dr. Lutz is pretty consistent across the county that we've all adopted um, you know, those practices. So I included that in your package as well. Uh, I think, too, the first time we've had a professional video done uh, for orientation, and I think that it would be good if we look at some of those pieces to be able to get them out on our schools and use the doorship on their website, too. But we haven't. But we've been trying to do a better job of marketing. I think we need to do that, particularly since we're training so many of the essential workers for tomorrow. And I think we can keep building on that and um, spreading the word and do more in the marketing arena. Um, 
I think that you know this help change that image. It's like you know our image for the years, which has been true the quality of vocational education. So we changed the name to careers and go to education. Um, there's still that little image problem that you have back in your home school. And I think now's the time to really market how essential the training that we're doing here and how the need for those type of workers exists. It's been proven over the pandemic. A lot of our students had jobs because they needed people, but they had training. I think it's up to us to be the advocates for them and to do more marketing on how we have. Visit your campus at the school to receive the guests. Anything else? Any other business? If not, is your motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. Thank you. Anyone need a break? Someone jump right in. We'll see you October 6th. Are you ready to learn? I don't know. How about you? She's got a race. She's ready to go. All right. Let's <laughs> call the order. The Joint Operating Committee of the Southeast Area Special School. Do we have a roll call? Here. Ashwire. Here. Harris. Mr. Stoffer. Ms. Johnson. Mr. Perry. Here. Ms. Lagaris. Here. Ms. Downer. Here. Mr. Alexander. Here. And Mr. Scott. Here. We have a quorum. Are there any board member comments or visitor comments? I also want to thank our chair for being here. He has, you have your own agenda. I don't know if you knew that. I do. Okay. All right. All right. So you can find that point. Uh, thank you all for being here, and I'm glad the schools are open and well. Um, we need a motion to approve the minutes from our August 11th meeting. Can I have a motion, please? So Mr. Batchwater, second. Second. Great by Ms. Ferris. Any questions or corrections on those minutes? Not all in favor, say aye. 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 I think we have, have uh, well, those approved. Um, next on the need of item, uh, motion to approve items 5.1 and 5.2, the program funds and approved payment invoices. Does that include the addition of the OZ? Right, we're going to have to add the OZ from that was put on. The OZ enterprises for $3,424. Do we have a motion for those items, including the addition of that one item? So move. Mr. Cashwire? Second. Second by Mrs. Harris. Are there questions or comments on that? Um, may I have a roll call, please? Mr. DeLeon? Yes. Mr. Cashwire? Yes. Mrs. Harris? Yes. Mr. Perry? Yes. Mr. Garros? Yes. Mrs. Downer? Yes. Mr. Alexandrov? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Motion carries. We move on to principal's report, Dr. Bell. Uh, so very happy to say that um, we're in day two of school. We, we opened yesterday. We did a, a continuing services where we had Probably about 90% of our kids came back traditionally into school, and then there about 10% did a, either a full remote or a hybrid option. Um, it, it was really pretty smooth the first couple of days, I'm happy to say. We got some things we have to work out, especially dismissal, but overall, kids are happy to be back in. So, we'll keep going over. Good luck to you. There you go. Thank you. Uh, building the ground report. Well, I don't have any report. No report. We have no architect here to report, so that leaves it up to Dr. Shearer. Welcome. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Actually. Glad you're here. Glad you're at the IU too. Superintendent of Record. Uh, actually, uh, Dr. Shear said some of those comments. I, I just echo that. I think that, again, sorry, for both groups, the, the collaboration, um, the communication coming from, from, from the IU, I think, has been outstanding. And again, I think I say every every month, but just the, the workings of this. this Southern Tier Group, along even at the, the other superintendents, Del Vernon, Knock, um, the key support, more than just the Steel Center Group, but um, the county is really fantastic. The county is so big. And they're not always the land side in the north or east or in the, in the west, always applies to, to what's here. And so that collaboration continues to be very, very strong. Even on the first day, the first day of Superintendent from Knock, we've been part of our group, and just, again, just trying to have collaboration. You know, so that just positive messages, which uh, maybe it looks like a big deal, but uh, for those who started school this, this week and they're kind of going through that, just a little shot in the arm about, hey, we're thinking about you out there. Um, so, again, I have to say every, every month, I'm just being very, very proud of your superintendents. Um, please continue to encourage them to, to engage because whether it's the IU, with our, our southern group here, whether it's Shasta, whatever the group is. That professional development and that, that collegiality and collaboration is never more needed and necessary than it is now. So we can go to the Good, thank you. Solicitors. I just want to add to that and um, wish Mont Valley School good luck as you open and we're all thinking of you and all the home districts as well. We're thinking of you and wishing you the best as you start this unprecedented school. Uh, informational items. Well, did you have anything additional? Well, I, I guess a, a point of discussion. What we are set for the next board meeting to be at Mont Valley School. And I'm happy to host it there, but does it make more sense to leave it up here because of the streaming phone things? And if that's the consensus that I'm on for going to Mont Valley, <laughs> to Mon Valley, if it makes more sense to people to stay up here. Well, for logistics, it might make sense until such time as we're in safer meeting. You don't have to move and settle on such a disruption since we're set for that. Would that be okay? We'll have to post all of the program. We would have to publish a, a notice of it, a meeting change, or? Um, for simply a change of location, as long as you would put a sign on the door down there to send people up here, and then I would say you could just put it on the website saying this location. Well, and we've been, we've been having our, our public meet Via, you know, the water participate via live stream, so we wouldn't be prohibiting, you know, that would change that part. Yeah. Well, I think that's the most complicated part is to move that part down there and get it to set up the work. Just so in case anybody wandered in, that's all. But to the social point, excuse me, there's no, there is no, there is no walking public right now. So um, posting is, is important, but there's really no expectation that the public can walk into the meeting. Just in case. <laughs> if anybody had a question later, then we would be covered. Okay. So we'll make that change. I'm looking forward to having you do that next one. I, I'm happy to do it. I just, like I said, <laughs> we're getting better at it. Yeah. It's a whole new world in so many different ways. Um, I don't think we have any other business, do we? Anyone? Any visitor comments? Do we even have any visitors? Oh, they're on the YouTube channel watching the stream. They can't interact. Okay. Only four minutes from getting to Can we see the how many people watch the meeting? Four. Four. The quarter. That's more than we have sometimes here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Yeah. Never done it. We'll go back and watch it again tonight. So we we'll uh, Yeah, I can show my wife. <laughs> I'm going to have to do that. All right. Uh, thank you for attending tonight. I would need a motion to adjourn. From the bench for a second. Thank you. Mr. Alexandro, thank you. I was worried. All in favor say aye. Aye. You do as well if you want to leave, or you guys, Wayne and, and Kathy, you plan to stay out for a while? No, I'm good. You're good. All right. Uh, this meeting adjourned. Thank you very much. <clears throat> we haven't figured out a way to put cheesecake through the computer yet, but if we did, you know, we would have that. That's quite a right anyway. Well, thanks, everyone. Thanks, uh, Kathy and Wayne. Talk to you soon.